So, uh, my name is Thorsten Jankowski, uh, and I'm the UX lead from Volkswagen Group IT. So, I'm a designer and a design expert, a UX expert in the IT organization of Volkswagen uh, Group uh, in the headquarter in, in Germany, in Wolfsburg, where the cars are built. And we are responsible for our uh, multi-brand design system, Group UI. We call it Group UI uh, for any web-based product. I'm uh, bringing with me our two developers uh, from our core product team, uh, Johannes and uh, Jan, uh, who will uh, uh, in a second uh, also uh, talk uh, or give a deep dive onto our code implementation. And I will have brought with you uh, with us, uh, uh, Matthias Fritsch from our truck and bus brand, MAN. Um, and he will talk about uh, how the collaboration in a multi-brand environment works best. So <clears throat> our design system for the Volkswagen Group, uh, which is an entire brand, uh, it is not comparable to the passenger car brand. Uh, it's another brand, uh, which is more or less the yeah, generic design brand for, for our internal applications. Um, but it is generic in that way that we implemented other brands within our uh, design system. So it brings a modular user interface or it is built for use modular user interfaces and uh, comes with a development framework for designing applications uh, which are web-based in the Volkswagen Group and for all of their brands, such as Audi and Porsche and uh, MAN um, and Volkswagen passenger cars, Seat, Skoda, and we have a, we have a total of, of 12 brands, which we will show later on. Um, so our vision in that is that all software products within our Volkswagen Group are built with one unified multi-brand design system. Uh, and one multi-brand front-end framework, which is consequently based on user feedback on different target groups. The target groups I will show in the next slide, uh, these are not our end users and clients, but our internal users means designers and developers. And Group UI, our product is based on cross-brand and cross-product collaboration with our using and consuming uh, product teams uh, and um, we are heavily uh, investigating their requirements and their needs and uh, doing uh, user feedbacks with them to be constantly or to, to, to become constantly better uh, and apply an, an optimal user inter inter experience to all of our products, to product owners, and also to the developers. And within that, also to our using customers uh, which are using our products, but it is not a, uh, a direct communication to the users, but it is an indirect through the uh, product teams. So how can we achieve with a design system to achieve a best in class user experience? Uh, we are thinking we have to deliver more than a single product. We have to, to deliver a, uh, a, a whole tool chain and a whole uh, toolbox. Um, so what we are delivering is a harmonized design and code library from design in Figma and uh, in, in Sketch from uh, harmonized and, and scalable design systems until uh, the, the um, web application modules or web components built with uh, Stencil.js. Um, this is every time harmonized. So we are delivering design and code, which is, a, yeah, which is uh, uh, um, a normal thing for a holistic uh, design system. But in our environment, it was a newbie and um, it is uh, unique in the, in the meaning of delivering a multi-brand approach. Um, we are delivering it in an integrated tool chain and uh, we are also uh, offering uh, the hosting and pipelines within our toolbox. So consuming teams get a whole package and are safe within this framework. So, so designers are safe and developers are safe from designing until developing 
uh, with all the implications such as uh, hosting and pipelines and so on. So we are brand agnostic in our framework. So we currently integrated our, our core brand Volkswagen uh, Volkswagen Group, uh, MAN and Porsche Production. So Porsche Production has an own theme for production applications. We are currently under development and under discussion with, uh, with the brand Skoda, Volkswagen Passenger Cars, Audi, and our new software brand Carriot, which is delivering the software for our automotive brands. We are also technology agnostic due to using Stencil.js and building web applications. So we can uh, uh, cover Angular and uh, React uh, frameworks, as you already know, but we are also um, technology agnostic in means of uh, SAP Fiori and Salesforce and all the other yeah, standard, thing, standard tools. And um, yesterday we also uh, included our uh, our web component button built with Stencil.js in a Salesforce theming. So that also works. So this is a signal for you. And um, building this, we are design token ready. So we have our design systems living in Figma. And um, coming from Figma, we can export the data from our design systems to a data string in JSON and build parsers for different other target um, target applications. One of that is our, our uh, framework, our group UI framework. Others can be other software. So we are design token ready. Uh, this is also very import, important and very interesting in, in combination with, uh, with Stencil.js. Due to all of this, our documentation is continuously growing. So this is a never, um, never yeah, ended product. So it's always beta. And uh, we are continuously developing this design framework from design to code. Um, our main targets is to, to deliver synergies, not to make the world a little bit nicer, but to be faster in delivering software and to, to be more um, yeah, design compliant, if you can say that, in all what we are doing. And what is super important is to bring with that optimized collaboration processes because we are uh, offering an in-house open source approach. So we are um, we are always comparing it with uh, with a sort of Lego toolbox we are all building together. So if if we have a product team uh, which is in need of a new component, we are saying, hey, here's the blueprint, please build us a component with our framework and so we can grow faster, uh, which also means we, we must have optimize contribution processes and models um, to, to enable this. And uh, what's also needed for this approach is a multi-channel communication within the company, within all brands, and uh, to find a cross-brand communication channel is very important uh, uh, in this surrounding. Uh, as I said, we have different target groups. The main target groups are our designers and developers. So building products with Group UI. These are the most important people um, to, to, to address for our framework. We also have stakeholders in business and IT to be the um, gate, gatekeepers. Uh, we also claim uh, users of our final product as important target groups. And we have also generally interested UI and fronted uh, uh, multiplicators. Uh, so we can, we can also build upon their feedback and all together give the framework of our target groups. Um, coming with that, we have our uh, collaboration processes built on this uh, requirement funnel. So we get input from uh, and demands from generally interested to stakeholders, to users, um, and the most feedback we get from our designers and developers on specific um, aspects of our framework. So we all cluster that and, um, and bringing it to a pipeline uh, to, um, to, to end up in a collaboration process where anyone can contribute and anyone gets the transparency 
uh, to see what comes next and when uh, his demand or her demand is ready. And our main goals with that is in the end also the to increase the user experience for our users, that's for sure. But the more important goals for us is to build faster together to gain more synergies uh, and to, to be more efficient in uh, when it comes to, to front end development. So far from my side for this introduction, now I hand over to Johannes and Jan who can give a, a, a deeper insight why we have chosen at Volkswagen to build web components with uh, Stencil and how we uh, apply uh, um, the, the component uh, delivery. Johannes yeah. or Jan? Yeah, thank you, Thorsten. Um, yeah, hello from Germany. My name is Johannes Bosch. I'm one of the software developers in the core team of Group UI who is building that web components with Stencil. Um, yeah, and I will start with the why, why we chose uh, web components as a technology approach. So um, yeah, one aspect, a very important aspect to us, to us is uh, uh, easy to use fact. So um, with web components, we are able to, to deliver a package, an NPM package, which could be installed in an easy way uh, in any kind of web application. So no complex import stuff of uh, CSS is needed, no uh, CSS conflicts anymore. That's very important for our users of our products as well. Next slide, please, Thorsten. Yeah, um, very important aspect for our, yeah, for our customers, for our users, for our products is the maintainability. They want less than possible effort in, for, for, for the design aspect of, of, of the product. They just want to be um, design, group UI design compliant um, in an easy way with, with web components. We are um, yeah, delivering, delivering, like I said, um, a package um, which could be easy installed. And in case we have to uh, roll out um, some changes uh, in our designs, uh, some new fancy features, the product has just to install the new, the latest package and that's it. No um, complex migration paths needed anymore. Um, next slide, please. Yes, it's uh, compatibility. Um, we had to decide in the beginning of our product uh, development, we had to decide which framework should we um, support. Is it Angular, is it React, is it Vanilla JS, uh, or, or is it Vue? And with uh, the web components approach, uh, um, we have uh, found a standard, um, a future-proofed standard, uh, which um, provides us to deliver or makes it possible to deliver um, um, yeah, yeah, components which are supporting all of those frameworks. So it's, it's, uh, we are very um, flexible. Our uh, products could choose their framework, which, we, which, which they like more, for, or which fits more to their product. Next slide, please, Thorsten. Uh, that's flexibility. Yeah, that's a an, uh, an, an challenge, um, an important point. So our decision was to, um, to, to use a shadow dog. So our components are closed for customizations. Um, but uh, our customers need uh, some, some flexibility. For instance, they want to um, inject an, an icon in, a, in, a, in, in any kind of component for, yeah, for example, in uh, import, uh, sorry, in an input field or an icon and a button and so on. And for uh, those requirements, we are using um, slots, which makes that possible for our products. But the CSS uh, stuff is capsulated in the component, it's, uh, it's fixed. Okay, next slide, please. And uh, yeah, last but not least, the functionality. Um, the first approach of Group UI was to deliver CSS and each product has to, um, Build uh, the, the functionality of a uh, dr uh, drop down, for instance, or a date picker for uh, each time again and again. And uh, with, with, with the web components approach, we don't deliver just the CSS stuff. Um, the, uh, we deliver um, yeah, the, the, the functionality uh, also with that package, for, for instance, keyboard handling, um, animations, whatever the, the user has just to install the package. And yeah, it's kind of plug and play, like Torsten said, uh, Lego um, yeah, 
Lego Baukasten, we say it in Germany. Um, yes, uh, next slide, please. And yeah, the most important um, question, why did we choose Stencil.js for our web components? Um, in the beginning, um, we did some research and um, yeah, to build web components in vanilla JS was not really an option. We, we searched for a tool and uh, yeah, uh, with, with Stencil.js, we found a way to build web components in a very comfortable way. It's, it's, it's easy to get in on this topic and just, just start to build your web component. Um, including the, with the whole um, bundling stuff, lazy, lazy loading is an aspect testing. It's very important for us. Um, puppeteer end-to-end -end tests, configuration, it's very nice. And yeah, so we are very happy with Tencel. We are in love with Tencel. So that's it. I will hand over to Jan. So um, uh, wrapping that up from, from Johannes, thank you for giving us an insight uh, why we are Going with uh, Stencil, um, if you would like to have a closer look onto our framework, <clears throat> um, it is publicly uh, uh, communicated uh, under the uh, um, domain you can see here, volkswagen.frontify.com hub 29. Um, you can have a look on that uh, and uh, uh, have a deeper insight onto our documentation if you like to. Um, so I'm heading over now to Jan. Thank you, <laughs> Johannes. Yeah, hello also from my side. My name is Jan and uh, I'm also a developer on the Group UI team. And yeah, on this slide, you could see uh, only a few components of our Group UI framework. And um, we have uh, at the moment uh, plenty of more components. I, I count uh, <laughs> Then uh, earlier in, in the moment, we have uh, over 50 components and in summary, six active themes and uh, overall 43 developers uh, has contributed in the last year uh, into our repository. So that is, uh, I think, uh, very good uh, summary for our components. And um, yeah, on the next slide, you can see some special components uh, from our side. Uh, here you can see our group UI showcase um, because we want to document our uh, components with our own components. So that is a, a little trick on, on this side. Uh, the showcase is uh, seamlessly integrated on Frontify our uh, CMS system for, for the documentation. And yeah, in the middle, for example, you can see our group UI code snippet in the Volkswagen group style. And yeah, this documentation can also be styled for the other brands uh, custom. Yeah, and it is a, a little play, uh, playground for the users so that, uh, yeah, you can test our components uh, before you Will uh, you will use them. Yeah, on the next slide, you can see maybe a, a, an Angular developer, um, which has to use now our pure web components. And uh, he will miss some functionality like auto-completion in his IDE, for example. And then he recognized that uh, Group UI wraps the web components into Angular components. And we are really happy, uh, next slide please, that uh, the, Ion the Ionic team has already a solution, solution there. Um, so check out this repository. Thanks to the Ionic team, uh, this Stencil DS output targets helps us a lot for all our React and Angular teams uh, across the group. Um, and yeah, at the moment, we have in use the React output target and also the Angular output target. And uh, an open topic on our side is to integrate the view output target and the Svelte output target uh, for all the other teams which are using Vue.js and Svelte.js. And yeah, that is a really massive thing for all the teams outside uh, our group. Uh, to use these Angular components and React components uh, on the top of our web components. 
yeah, on the next slide, uh, you have a short overview um, of some of our themes and um, how we split them into one. And there is a get mode and set mode functionality and stencil, and we use this to manage all the themes uh, in the components. And here you can see a short uh, code snippet from a simple my component, uh, I would say, and yeah, how this uh, will work in, in into. Uh, uh, into a component. And here you can see also the Shadow Dome is activated, as Johannes mentioned before. And yeah, this uh, could be a component uh, opener. And on the next slide, you can see a global script, um, which we are using to, uh, yeah, to split it up. And this is linked in our stencil config, and it is a simple recursion. So uh, the element is looking for a theme property or an attribute. And if there is no theme, they, uh, the script is looking on the next parent element and so on. And yeah, then it activates one of the themes. And in the end, it can be something like this in the HTML file. Um, we can activate the theme with uh, property here. Yeah, and uh, in the end, some last words from our side. Uh, so from the dev perspective about testing, uh, here you can see a possible reaction of a developer, which is uh, hearing that Stencil JS provides a tool set uh, for screenshot testing. So this is a really nice feature uh, of the Ionic team. And yeah, test-driven development is, is our daily business. Um, next slide, please, Thorsten. Uh, yeah, is our daily business. And we use the following methods at the moment. Uh, so there are, of course, just unit tests, uh, puppeteer end-to-end -end tests, for example, for keyboard handling tests, and also this screenshot testing feature. Uh, I have to say this is experiment, experimental at the moment. So uh, there are some issues we are facing, for example, running these tests into a CI or maybe on a Windows device. That is a bit uh, problematic problematically, I would say. But uh, yeah, we love it because uh, it, helped, it helps us a lot in the daily business and um, to the to the to develop a uh, pixel perfect design is, is an uh, experience for us with this test uh, that is really nice. Uh -huh. um, thank you, Johannes, uh, uh, Jan, sorry. <laughs> Which brings us to our next uh, um, uh, speaker, uh, um, Matthias from MAN, which is our truck brand. But um, what I had in mind when I heard Johannes and uh, uh, Jan uh, speaking is uh, a thing which is very novel to us usually is to accept the, the, the size of our company. So uh, maybe I can wrap that up. So, so if you have a mind, our alone, our group IT, which is our multi-brand IT organization is about 12,000 people uh, big. Um, so we have worldwide 12,000 people working in IT for Volkswagen Group within Volkswagen and the other brands. Um, and um, you cannot imagine how much, how many uh, products we are uh, uh, delivering in this IT organization. Uh, we have so many use cases for internal and external clients. So you cannot imagine the, the redundancies and the, the, uh, the potential for synergies in that. So we alone with Group UI um, have more than 60 teams and uh, building 40 applications. So full stack application, not, not uh, a small application, but, but bigger tankers uh, using our uh, design framework. That's only I wanted to um, uh, uh, mention in, um, when, when talking about the Volkswagen Group. So, but now 
Uh, we are coming to you, um, to Matthias. Um, hello, and uh, I will switch now to um, to Figma, where you can see exactly the same screen, which is great. So we can go on from here. Cool. Thank you, Thorsten. So hi, thanks for having me here. I'm Matthias. I represent the brand Emma and Truck and Bus from the Volkswagen concern. Um, yeah, I'm leading their design system at the MIN from design and code perspective. And yeah, together here with Thorsten and the Group UI developer team, we will now give you some more insights about, about our multi-brand uh, design approach. We will go over our uh, definition, the principles, how we achieved our buy-ins for this multi-brand thing, plus show you some actual uh, thing, how we work together between the brands. But yeah, let's start with our definition. So uh, our multi-brand design system enables brands to add their individual DNA to overreaching agnostic design decisions. So I guess it's pretty straightforward and uh, explain what we understand and need from a design system. And yeah, but uh, first things first, provide a bit more context. What does a uh, multi-brand even mean? So yeah, there are uh, different, let's call it brand architecture models. And uh, for multi-brand design systems, I will skip uh, the much details in here uh, and the differentiation. If you are really into this topic, there are uh, awesome talks from Specify app, especially from Luis, shout out to him. If you're interested, uh, uh, take a look on that. But important is to know, we go with the hybrid model. So, uh, but to be clarified this a bit, we have to give you a bit more insights into the Volkswagen structure and how many brands are really involved here. And Thorsten will give you some more uh, details about this in this next slide here. Yeah, so you, you may heard of, of it that the Volkswagen group contains iconic brands such as Volkswagen passenger cars with the Beetle, uh, but also Audi and Porsche uh, uh, belong to the Volkswagen Group and uh, uh, Skoda, Seat, nowadays Cupra, Lamborghini, Bentley, Ducati uh, also belong to our group. And all of them, some of them are very iconic, some of them are iconic and some of them um, also are uh, a group in itself, like Triton, which is uh, our truck and bus and uh, and uh, um, yeah, heavy heavy commercial car uh, um, group, uh, which again contains MAN, for example, Scania, uh, the uh, v uh, com commercial vehicles of Volkswagen, Navistar, and our uh, um, yeah software brand Rio. Uh, plus, there's a new kid in town, uh, uh, our carrier uh, brand, which is the central brand for delivering software for all of them. So, and we are we are uh, um, enabling all of them with our approach to uh, to yeah to avoid redundancies in building again and again uh, uh, web components. But because, to be honest. A button stays the same, uh, uh, even if different brands are using it. Um, we should just uh, intelligently apply their individual brand uh, experience. Matthias? Yeah, <clears throat> so totally agree. To wrap this up, so our definition is hybrid. That means one uh, design system will feed the organization. So uh, in that visualization is the Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft is leading all the brands, providing that agnostic solution in terms of design and code. And this solution can be consumed and modified to fit the dedicated needs for each brand. And yeah, to be honest with you guys, each brand has a lot of, uh, uh, I would say needs and uh, uh, dedicated needs. So uh, yeah, to establish this thing, this really big multi-brand uh, design system mindset, these things, we need to, uh, yeah, we have, to, we need to have, to have to have the same mindset and we need overreaching principles. That's in the next, next slide, Thorsten. Exactly. So we need overreaching uh, principles to really uh, establish uh, this big thing and uh, build up all our decisions based on that foundation, on that principles. And these principles are also straightforward. So uh, we say flexibility over rigidity. 
global collaboration over stakeholder focus, transparency over complex processes, and that all wraps up with a common vision for uh, with a common vision over individual goals. And uh, for sure, uh, we have to. It's in the next slide. We have to decide or define even simpler when we talk to stakeholders that are really, I would say, out of scope and not really deep into these design system or even codish things. So uh, we define even simpler. If uh, each of us is building similar things, why not building these things together? It's really, it's basically, it is that simple. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to grab that simply, simplicity, we have to translate it into numbers to have a buy-in or to receive a buy-in and also yeah, get the business behind us. Or in other words, we have to convince the management. Yeah. And for sure, first of all, we start always with, uh, yeah, uh, what are the benefits from a simple design system? Everyone should be heard about it. For sure, it's a buzzwordish thing but uh, it's pretty good to argument here. So with the design system, you reduce uh, the uh, effort of UI and also from the developer perspective, because we have pre-built Lego brickets, they are approved and finalized and whatever. And within, with this, we have a scale in UX because these yeah, assets are, are good also in terms of usability or accessibility. So it's quite easy to argument this. We are two to three times faster on the market and just deliver products faster. But now one step ahead, when we, uh, yeah, uh, talking about multi-brand design systems, it's just even more, it's just even better. Let's name it like this, keep it simple. So uh, in compared to a regular design system, we can save even more time because we have multiple uh, brands, multiple designers, multiple developers who optimize these uh, components continuously, which increase the UX even more and we save even more time in compared to a regular normal design system. And yeah, that's pretty, pretty awesome. And especially with these money charts, let's name it like this, where you have the argumentation, we are faster on the market and really save costs. It's that transparent and that easy to understand also for the manager, money givers, investors, you name it. Exactly. And uh, yeah, so how this looks in the real world. So a preview of how we work together. So uh, for sure, Group UI is pretty awesome. And uh, so our uh, collaboration model, we call it the rainbow of collaboration. Uh, it includes a lot of shading, so to say. And uh, yeah, let's see the shading. So first and important thing is we need a simple chat. So really we have to align in a single source of communication. We try to avoid like a Slack here, a Teams there, a trillion emails here, and maybe some, some Git uh, communications as well. So we aligned on a single source of communication. In our case, it's a good uh, Slack channel-ish solution, which also includes some, uh, some plugins and so on, but we aligned on Slack. And then we have shared Figma libraries. These libraries doesn't only include uh, UI kits, for instance, they also include presentations and uh, workshop files that are related to design systems. So uh, why do you uh, to reinvent the wheel if other brands or uh, colleagues from the other brands already prepared pretty good presentations or workshops, etc. Then uh, common documentation. Uh, when we talk about uh, documentation, it's the classic thing. You have to uh, document all your stuff or it doesn't exist. So we aligned on the same uh, technology platform. We use Frontify for our documentation for design systems. We have shared content for sure. Why we should have another description for a button as the other brand. So it's quite logical, so to say. And we also share plugins. For instance, if some uh, brand creates their own plugin to communicate between Figma and Frontify, for instance, we can easily share this between the brands. We uh, have an overreaching backlog. It's really quite important that it's synchronized for sure. It's transparent and it's accessible. It's easy accessible for everyone. So no uh, uh, single sign on craziness and a thousand logins. So it should be really accessible. And yeah, we have weeklies and uh, retrospectives to be really aligned with the needs and try to get some uh, yeah, structure in all these things. 
as the developers mentioned, we are really test driven in uh, the way we code. So this includes also pairings between different brands who work on the same modules, for instance, like a date picker or something. And last but not least, the fun kappa. But to be honest, the fun thing is really important. You have to keep the satisfaction high through all the brands and yeah, provide or give that feeling to all contributors that they feel like co-authors of the design system, not only contributors or consumers. Only with that mindset, you will achieve long-term success. Yeah. And which leads us to the next slide. It's just really a pretty basic visualization of our collaboration model. Basically, it's really quite simple. So every brand, as we mentioned, has their own tradition, their own pride, their own design decisions, foundations, basics, you name it, like colors, typography, and so on. And these design decisions will be uh, or shift over into our technical pipeline framework, Group UI. Group UI provides the agnostic uh, skeleton components and also these uh, same from the Figma from the design perspective. And then we do the magic, we created the themes and have uh, individually uh, created libraries, uh, style guides, even design systems for uh, each brand. Yeah. And really the benefit for all these multi-brand thing is uh, in the next slide, please. Oh, it was the last slide. <laughs> when we switch. So unfortunately, there, there was another slide. So if we work multi-brand, we have the opportunity to argument multi-brand. So uh, if one brand already has a good decision regarding uh, designs, yeah, here it is, a good decision regarding design, regarding components, or even buy-ins from the management, we can easily grab this argumentation and say, hey, look at these, the Skoda guys already established this. We should follow this approach because it works. Plus it also has business numbers behind it and so on. So this is really an awesome benefit when we uh, establish this mindset multi-brand, we can really argument multi-brand through all uh, silos, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's really uh, also a mindset uh, within uh, a big tanker like, like Volkswagen. So, so uh, appreciate collaboration instead of uh, information hiding. Uh, uh, appreciate also uh, uh, MVP working. So, so let's let's jump in and build a small component and later scale it and appreciate also ideas from other brands, such as uh, uh, bringing third party products into the into the framework and, and not always, not always. Uh, create a, a web component. Maybe sometimes it's also only a, 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 not a web component, but a JavaScript uh, 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 part you can can reuse, and it's an openness, and uh, uh, it's it's yeah it's it's an openness to trust each other from the other brands from other departments um, to to collaborate. We are creating a sort of design and front end family in the in the group, uh, which is a great feeling because anyone can 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 build upon. Uh, the knowledge of of the other ones, and uh, build upon the the work of others, um, and it, that goes also for design and for code. So we have a code community or a code uh, developer community in our framework and a designer community and a, uh, a global community. So this is really um, at least for a German company, it is new. And it is super much fun, uh, and it works and lives with the tool stencil JS because that gives us the ability and the freedom uh, and the flexibility uh, to build exactly this. So, thank you for uh, for your patience and your your interest on this topic. Now we would be happy to uh, to answer your questions.